Welcome to the great debate where today I'm going to dive into a subject that frequently gets people really riled up about anime or some aspect of the anime world. And today I'm going to tackle this thing that comes up that people say a lot. And I should point out, when I say I'm going to tackle this, I'm not going to necessarily take a side. I'm just going to kind of dive into the topic and look at why people would think that and how how accurate it might be. And it is this question down here. Why do people say the manga was better? You should read the manga. The manga is better. Why would that be? Uh, I've got a chat room going here with some interesting uh, stuff being talked about. So you'll hear me reference that every so often. The chat room's awesome. And you get this a lot with um, certainly a lot of famous anime. And, you know, most anime is adaptation, is adapting something, a manga or a video game or something. And when it's a manga, you know, it's very reasonable to compare the two. And almost always you hear this thing, the manga is better. Why is that? Well, a couple of obvious reasons. Let's get those out of the way. The first is that if somebody's saying that, there's a good chance they read the manga before the anime came out. They're fans of the original manga. And as we all know, if you read the book before watching the movie, you'll like the book more. If you watch the movie before reading the book, you'll probably appreciate the movie more. So that's a factor. But it also is complicated by the fact that the manga is the original work. And a lot of people think that because the original work is the original work, it is a superior version. That's actually a flawed argument, uh, simply because there's no, it is not necessarily true that putting a work in a different medium automatically degrades it or devalues it. It simply puts it in a different medium, right? Psycho, Jaws, Fight Club, uh, The Godfather, these were all books. These were all adaptations of books made into movies. Right? No one's calling them slouches in the movie department. So, what do you do, right? Um, now, William points out in the chat room, one of, the, one of the, the issues, that imagination is a big part of this. And this is very, very true. When you're reading a manga, you are imagining the actions of the characters. You're imagining how they are reacting. You're imagining how they're saying things. Your imagination fills in these gaps, and that's always going to be superior to a TV or movie version. Oh, almost always. Because it is what works best for you. Right? So that is absolutely a, a thing the anime version has to contend with. And again, I think this is another thing that we have to be careful with, because it's, it's, in a sense, unfair to judge movies this way, um, uh, this way, because they cannot just leave it up to your imagination. They ha it is a visual medium. They have to provide you with the visuals of the thing, right? Um, and I think that's one of those things where it's unfair, but it's also true that people have this problem with, with the medium. You know, we, we can... We can argue about that, we can fight with it, but it is going to be something people people struggle with on that. Um, now, Jod in the chat room also points out, and there's another really uh, significant thing. You know, if you've read Akira, the original manga, and you go to watch the movie, you'll know that there are six volumes of this, right? This is basically the first movie, and then there are another five volumes of plot. So there's lots of stuff missing from that movie. That's a problem. Because when you read the manga, you're going to say, well, but they, they didn't put in all this stuff. And that's, again, where we have to be a little careful. Because they can't put, all, put in all of it necessarily. Right? If they wanted to adapt Akira into an actual story, it would have to be like a 26-episode TV series as opposed to a movie. The movie cannot contain all that material. Um... But then the question becomes, should they have made a movie out of it, right? Was that the right choice for that material? I think that's an interesting question. 
when we look at what they chose to adapt. The other complexity there, too, is that, for lack of a better word, or lack of a better way of phrasing this, not everything is going to be appropriate to put into the anime, right? Sometimes manga authors go on tangents. Sometimes manga authors insert things that don't really have much to do with the story or are just kind of there momentarily that we may enjoy, but somebody adapting it might say, but I, this doesn't really help anything, so I'm not going to include that because I don't think it's, it's helpful. I think it'll confuse people. That's part of adaptation is taking something and saying, well, you know, I can't make the manga, I, I can't just remake the manga and anime, I've got to make some de hard decisions here about what will work in the, in, in this case, the animated medium, right? Um, <clears throat> now that's a really good point, Joe, in the chat room. One of the problems is that people generally don't notice a lot of these things. They don't notice the framing, the music, cinematography, pacing. They think, they think in terms of, what are the plot events? This happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, this happens, that is the movie. It's like there's a lot more to it than that, but because that one event was not in the movie, it was bad. And that's, ex that's a very significant problem. Um, and as Karyon points, pacing. Pacing is a huge deal. Pacing is, I think, one of, one of the big things people do not notice as a difference in the manga versus the anime. So I'm going to bring up something... Uh, recent anime adaptation, The Ancient Majesty's Bride. Uh, this is the, the, the manga of that first volume of the manga of Ancient Majesty's Bride. And they decided when adapting this to adapt it pretty straight and to pace it similarly to the manga. And I personally think that was not the best choice because the manga is very slow paced. And the anime series feels very sluggish as a result. I think this would have worked better if it were more snappily paced but they are trying to hold to the manga, I think, a little too closely. I think this is one of those things that would have, would have, would have benefited from a, a slightly snappier adaptation, right? Um, and that's a, that's a really uh, difficult thing. Another good example of this is Trigun. Do I, uh, hmm, I actually have an example of that. But, and anyway, where is Trigun? Yeah, I got Trigun over there somewhere. Um, the plot structure of Trigun the manga is very different from the plot stru structure of Trigun the anime series because the author, uh, Yasuhiro Naitao, was kind of still figuring out the characters and the plot structure and what he's trying to do in those early chapters of the manga. Once folks were able to sit down and read all of it, they could come up with a, for lack of a better term, a more effective structure for that story than the one he initially came up with. In fact, he said at one point that he thinks that the the anime version of the structure of the story um at least when he was first introduced to it was better than the pacing that he had for the manga and how all that was structured was structured and, and done um you know because again you could just you can you can sometimes you can look at something whole and realize oh this is how this all fits together better than the author who's still trying to figure it out you know week by week as he's drawing it to his his deadlines and that's something I, I think folks don't pay attention to when it comes to this stuff, and they should. The, the pacing has to be different. It has to be adapted for anime in an effective way. And that sometimes means not following the pace of the manga. Here's the thing. An anime adaptation is an adaptation. It's not going to be exactly the same. Um, and then you get some, some lucky things. And if, here's another, you know, let's, let's talk about this. Ghost in the Shell. Right? This is the original Ghost in the Shell manga release in America. Um, everyone loves the Ghost in the Shell anime film by Mamoru Oshii. I don't want to say loves. I don't, want to say, I don't want to say everyone loves. But that is a very, very, very highly regarded anime film, and it is not a close adaptation of this manga. It goes way off the rails. Um, it adapts certain elements pretty closely. But it is very much its own story and its own thing. Because the director looked at it and said, okay, here are these pieces that I can extract into a movie, but just extracting those pieces, in other words, 
there are side stories and such in the manga that would just be kind of that would distract from the the tight narrative of, of a movie but just extracting those things don't have enough connecting tissue. So he, he constructed the, the rest of the tissue that fleshed that out into a, a, full, a full body, a full shell, if you will. And so that's the thing, is that you can absolutely adapt, some, some, you can absolutely adapt something into a new work, into a new thing that is a fusion of the, of the original work and the, the new thing, right? Um, all of these things um, are all part of the adapter's job of looking at this and saying, how do we make this work as an anime series, right? You can't just put a frame on the screen, put another frame on the screen, and just go and move forward and move on from there. Except in some cases. Mushishi, famously, is a an almost you know, panel by panel storyboarded anime where they, they almost, they, they took it pretty much panel by panel, you know, you, you can look at that, each one of those turns into a shot in the anime series. Not precisely, right? But that's because that manga works very well in that way for an anime series, right? Some things certainly do fit that way, but that's not a guarantee. Just like Ghost in the Shell, and those elements of Ghost in the Shell, you know, worked well for that anime film and worked well for Standalone Complex, for example, as kind of a basis. So sometimes something like Mushishi will come along and that will work, but doesn't it's not a guarantee. Yep. Um, and yeah, and, you know, animation is not the same as manga. The amazing motion of Kill a Kill cannot be expressed in manga form. It just doesn't work in manga form. Because that is a... Um, that is a concept conceived as animation by animators who want to create animation. Obviously, you know, you could draw a manga version of Kill a Kill, but it's not going to have the same power. It's not, it's not going to be communicated to the viewer. It's not, it's not going to come across um, the same way to the viewer as would you know, as the anime does. What can you, well, you can compare anything between paper and, and anim animation, right? They can all be compared. It's just a matter of, of comparing them fairly, of saying these are two different things. You know, how well does this thing fit the animation medium versus how well does this thing fit the comic medium? Um, good example. There are a lot of American comics, um, gesturing at my American comic collection, um, that I think would work better animated or live action than they work as comics. Because they're basically storyboards. You know, it's, it's a person standing there talking to somebody else, somebody else standing there talking to somebody else, and the action is very, um, very simple in, in that sense, where it's, oh, a guy punching somebody else. Okay, we know how to, how to, how to film that. And that doesn't really, you know... I, I, I think I would be more engaged watching this moving than I am in reading this comic, even though I'm reading it in the original version. Um, okay, so you're, so you're asking, so how do you compare those things? What are the elements that you use to compare those things? Great question, great question. Um, so I think you... You can compare the pacing, because the pacing, you know, in a manga is... It is flexible, but there are also parameters around it, right? There are how many frames you use to get something across. There's how much you crowd into a panel. Uh, there's, how, there's what you show in the panel, how, how much action is implied in the panel. That can certainly be there. Um, and then also, obviously, the pacing of the, uh, the animation itself. I think you can also look at... <sighs> character. How character is expressed, what of the characters you <coughs> you get across in the animated version versus the manga version. So, for example, um, Scott Pilgrim. <clears throat> Again, you're adapting. That's what six volumes. Uh, yeah, six volumes of comic into a movie that's going to be condensed. But you you know you get a very the characters that they do introduce and show you 
um, in the film, they do communicate a lot of their personality in those brief moments. So even though it's very brief, you get a sense of those characters and their personality, which I think is, is a testament to that film and how well it's, it's adapting that comic. That's the kind of thing you can look at, that, okay, yes, Knives feels like Knives in Scott Pilgrim. It's a slightly different take on Knives, but you know, they got the, the basic beats of that character. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Doo -doo 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 -doo. What else can you can you compare? Um, obviously, you can also compare art style. I think it is valid to look at the the way that things are drawn. Again, recognizing that a character design for a manga has a different role to fill and can be and can do different things than a character design for an anime series. So they have to be um, they have to be contrasted as opposed to compared directly. But I think you can also say, okay, you know. Um, they did this thing with these character designs and these things with these character designs, and do they work? Um, oh, another thing, too, also relating to pacing. Um, one of the big problems anime has, different than manga, as, as, as Karyan's putting out in the chat room as well, is that if I'm reading a manga and... Heh! I haven't flipped through this one, just this one thing. And... I'm a little confused about what's going on. I can just glance back at the previous panel and glance forward. It's a lot easier to consume a manga um, random access, whereas with anime, it's very rare for somebody to actually rewind and go back and check things in the past. So manga can manga can be looser in what it what it portrays because it knows folks can can go back go back and glance back at things. That's very different. Um, you know, that's that's just one of those things that is is hard. Um, and then also, getting back to Karyon's central point, manga is a more casual thing where I can read, you know, this Ghost in the Shell manga in a couple of hours, whereas Ghost in the Shell standalone complex is a, a much larger commitment than that, right? And especially for a lot of these manga, I mean, it, it's it's a lot of time. So you know, you get through a lot of manga material much quicker than you do anime material. And it's a little easier, I think, to pick up and put down a, ma a manga, a book, than it is to start and stop an anime series, remember where you were, what, what was going on. Partly because, again, that, that difficulty of access. You're not going to glance back at where you were. Um, and that actually is, is even further complexified, if you will, by the fact that Anime traditionally, no, certain anime are aimed very directly at otaku and a particular brand of otaku, the, the otaku who care and pay attention. So you are expected to notice things. You are expected to be paying attention. And, you know, as, as you know, Karyan, you're right. This is something where if you're watching Harui Suzumiya, there will be little, you know, a couple of frame shots that they just you know, really quickly blast at you and little things off in the corner of the, the screen that you're supposed to notice because you're, you are an otaku. You're supposed to be consuming this with every fiber of your being. So that's a much bigger um, expectation on you than just picking up a manga and watching it. Um... And yeah, exactly him. You know, there are some things that don't translate to anime. Legend of the Twilight. I love Legend of the Twilight. The dot hack, you know, spin-off story. Um, but it just that that particular storyline would have seemed kind of weird to the more mass audience. So they changed it. Kind of makes. Um, is there a case where a manga can convey an action scene more effectively than an anime? I'm absolutely sure there is. Um... It all hinges on that word effectively, right? Um, I have not... Nobody's animated this scene, but there's a sequence actually in, in the Ghost in the Shell manga uh, later on where they're fighting various in various Fuchikoma um, against uh, another force. And it's very confusing 
it, it's very chaotic what's going on. And so you see folks sort of rounding around, and you're not sure what's going on. And it's the kind of thing that I think in anime, frequently, that would be too clear to the viewer what's going on. Just because of, you know, it's animated, so you can see what's going on. Because it's these little frames of things you know, all throughout the page, I think that worked better for that kind of a sequence. Right? Um, you know, action's hard and complex, though. I have, because action is action. It's, it's all there in the word, right? You know, in animation's all about movement. Well, technically. Um, so that is the kind of thing that, that is... that. Anime is, anime is, by its nature, going to be better at things like action. But certainly there are going to be cases where manga can do it better. And, and there will also be certainly cases where it can be animated poorly and ineffectively, right? Um, yeah, and you certainly get times when there, a, a manga came after and folks prefer the manga. In fact, I mean... It's going on right now, Gundam the Origin, right? Um, they made the anime series, then uh, Yoshikazu Yasuhiko, the, the character designer, came back and started drawing his own manga version of, of uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, and a lot of folks like that a lot better than the anime, but then that's compl uh, complexified, if you will, by the fact that we're seeing the, the same thing we have, saw before in reverse. This version cuts out a lot of the Battle of the Week stuff in the TV series that didn't really further the plot, but kind of had to be there because, well, it's episode five, it's time for another Battle of the Week. You know, there has to be a battle in every episode. So, with the benefit of hindsight, the manga version can smooth out that plot in the same way that the, you know, the anime can sometimes do that. And that's further complexified by the fact that often, when you're talking about an anime adaptation of a relatively recent manga, you know, your typical situation, the, the anime is serving partly as an ad for the manga. It, it is being made partly by the publisher, or funded partly by the publisher, um, in the hopes that it will spur sales of the manga. So they don't want the anime to be wildly different than the manga, most of the time. Yeah, they, they want that to pull people back to, to reading the manga. In the case of something like Gundam, they don't care. Evangelion's a great case, where everyone in Japan knows the plot of Evangelion. They don't need the manga to follow, follow that plot, so they can, you know, they can tell their own story. They can do their own version of that storytelling. Um, and I think that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, in those cases, I think it, it works. But it's rarely the motivation for for most anime adaptations of manga. Those are kind of ads, right? So yeah, it's complicated. There there are a lot of different factors in all of this, and I think it's something that we have to pay attention to. We have to be aware that manga is a medium and anime is a medium, right? Um, Hemhoki asks, could you fit more information on in one page? Where reader can just take it all in. Um, whereas an anime has to replay that particular part over and over to get, um, get everything that's happening. Technically, yes. Um, but also, remember, the anime can also cram out information into, you know, a single frame. And do the exact same thing. Akira does this. You know, the anime version of Akira just gives you tons of information and just hangs on that shot while you just consume everything that you're, you're, you're seeing. So... Uh, and that's something actually that's typical of the anim the anime medium. Uh, you know, anime, as its own approach to animation, does frequently. Give me a shot and then just let me watch that thing. And let me consume that thing without worrying about constantly moving it and constantly, you know, cutting from one thing to another. Um, a great example of this is an anime series called, called Quiet Country Cafe or Yokohama Kaidashi Kiko. Adaptation of a manga, two OVAs, and it's this very quiet, laid-back story. So a lot of the shots are just a sunset, and you just watch the sunset for a while. It's not overplayed; it's not overdone. But the point of the the the, the sequence is the character is walking up to this one vantage point to, to look at a sunset, and so you see the sunset for you know 
a good couple of seconds, right? And you just appreciate that thing, and you cut back, and more stuff happens. Um, so that is one of those things that, that, that happens. And again, you have you have sound, and you have motion to add information as well. You have how a character, you know, does that. You'll notice, by the way, in anime, there's something that anime does that, that other approaches to animation do not do. It seems to be very unique to, to the Japanese approach to animation. You'll cut between two different characters who are frustrated with each other. And remember, anime is a very limited animation medium. But you'll cut to, and this happens all the time in shoujo, you'll cut to a character, and her eyes will narrow. You come back to somebody else, and her eyes will open slightly. And you think, they could have just cut to her with her eyes narrowed. They didn't have to animate those four or five frames of her eyes slowly narrowing. But that's important. That communicates something, and it draws your eye, because there's movement going on, your eyes drawn to movement. Again, I, don't, I can't think of any other, you know, Western animation doesn't do that, limited animation, European animation, we, Disney animation doesn't really do that. But anime is constantly drawing your attention to a character's inner thoughts just through animating little bits of their face and how those are moving. But you're absolutely right, Van Riley. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry Van, yeah, Van Riley in the chat room, that... You know, manga is more interactive in its own way and more imaginative in its own way. When I'm reading this, I'm imagining, you know, how those characters are speaking. I'm imagining what that room smells like and feels like. Is it cold? Is it warm? All that kind of stuff. And I think um, that is a more intimate experience than anime where you are essentially consuming the material. Now again, otaku have helped to elevate that a little bit by saying, yeah, we're consuming, but we're consuming very actively. The standard otaku in Japan, or the stereotype of the otaku in Japan, actually that's not, that's not correct either, the, the kind of fan that fans believe they are in Japan, right, that, that standard that fans hold to themselves in Japan is that they really pull in every every pixel on that screen is being pulled into their eyes while they're watching it. So that helps make it a little more interactive, slightly more interactive. It's why I think you know the Moe phenomenon was such a big thing because people were you know getting so invested in these characters. But there's no question. You know, when you're when you're reading a manga, when you're when you're doing this, especially for a black and white medium, you have to imagine those colors too, right? So it is a much more intimate experience than your typical kind of manga thing, or typical anime thing. That is just very very true. Uh, so you, you know, those are two different aspects to the story. It's one of the reasons why anime is often often feels a little slower paced than the manga, because they got to make sure that everyone can understand what's going on, right? They, they have to be paced for the slowest fan, right, in a sense. Especially the ones that are, that are aimed at a larger audience. It has to be clear, so they, they let it go. They let it, let it kind of move at a slower pace for that reason. All right, I think we're going to pause, really stop the discussion there. I want to thank everyone in the chat room for their, as usual, excellent, very thoughtful, very deep discussion on this topic. This is wonderful. We'll be doing more of this in weeks to come uh, on other aspects of uh, anime and uh, different elements of, of geekdom and kind of diving deep into these things. So, as always, thank you all very much for being here. I hope you'll be here next week.